You're listening to www.integralnaked.org. Well, yesterday, Mark asked me to think about this question of what is evil. So I thought about it from my own just personal experience and actually came up, Ken, with what you said here at the end, that an evil act is something someone does uh, to a being that they have no connection with, no sense of feeling for, no empathy, no relationship that's been completely objectified and put outside. And interestingly, in my own uh, spiritual development over the last few months specifically, and really witnessing it here this weekend at the Integral Spiritual Center event, uh, what I keep seeing is how I put other people outside of me, even people who are here in my uh, fellowship. And that that is really my growing edge as a spiritual journeyer, is uh, seeing those places of uh, judgment and defense and instead uh, really getting curious about the we with everyone, with absolutely everyone. And I think that uh, as I've done this, this and continue to do it and hit all of these places of walled offness, uh, really genuine tears come forward as part of that opening. Uh, and also I see that it's um, often my own suffering and the suffering of other people that is what I'm walling off. That's really what it is. I mean, I don't want to feel it because it's just too raw, too weird, let alone the 20 million people. How about just, you know, the person sitting, you know, three steps away from me who kind of has a scowl that I don't like for some reason. I don't know, I don't like that kind of line in their face. It's something about it, kind of. And uh, whatever um, transformation of identity I might experience in this large, huge everythingness, if I can't actually be with other people, what's going on? I'm not even talking about being with other people who are like kind of the enemy. I'm talking about, you know, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah particularly, yeah, particularly Ken. Leave weirdness out. We're talking yeah. about just one, one human at a time. So I, in, in this moment, in hearing this whole conversation, I, I've been feeling uh, actually a gratitude to my own suffering and the suffering even bringing in the 20 million of the people in the room because it's opening my heart. And I think that that is the, the real transformative process that uh, I need to go through right now. That's great. It's the power of the we that we've talked about so much. I and we and it all go together. And, and for those of you in, in the Buddhist tradition, for example, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. If you actually do that right, Buddha is the ultimate I or transcendental I. And Dharma is the ultimate it or suchness of everything that's arising moment to moment. But Sangha, really understanding that we, is extraordinary. It's fairly easy to enlighten the I and the it. But again, try that person sitting next to you, that, you know, like Tammy's talking about, you don't even like the scowl on their face. You're enlightened, but not, 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 that, not that dip. So I think the we is something that all of us have learned so much this, this, this weekend, because the we that was generated was so extraordinary. And we, we want to open this up, incidentally, the only reason we had it kind of closed at the beginning was just really so everybody could, could let that we develop to these different lineage minds. And, and we all came away from it changed, just not, not because we talked about integral or not because we had some theory we put forward. We didn't do that. We just sat here as a we and it changed us, changed us profoundly. We were all changed, don't you think? David, yes? Tammy used this great, great word, which was curiosity. I just want—I just wrote that down. I just want to just curiosity to be curious about another person. So maybe just just to offer that, just to reflect, just to say, just just repeating what Tammy said, not not adding anything. Just to reflect that back as a spiritual practice. And Rorty talks about curiosity, right? Just to be curious at the beginning of a spiritual practice and creating the we might be just to get in touch with curiosity about the person sitting next to me, and it's about curiosity. So that's one, and then I'm going to flip it over to, to, to David, 
and just Fred's, the second thing, just to reflect back what Fred said, Fred didn't tell us, so I want to be kind of really clear, because his last sentence was really important because it changed everything. Fred didn't say, right, okay, therefore, there's no hierarchy. We can have no idea what's evil in the world. Right? We can't act. He didn't say that at all. He said, let's hold the paradox of needing to make judgments in a real world and of the mystery, and let's hold the paradox together. That was a big deal. This is just about the word curiosity. Uh, we, uh, it has a bad press because it's sort of nosiness. You're <laughs> curious about somebody. Now, originally, curiosity means caring. That's the root for it. It's caring. It's, uh, it's the presupposition for curing an evil. Yeah.